Use the referral link in the description to G2A.com for all of your Xbox codes, PlayStation codes and video games and be sure to use the code CHEZ at checkout to get yourself 3% cash back. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 5 of Season 3 here at Southampton. Thank you for all of your feedback on the previous episode with regards to uh, new potential central midfield signings. I've added a number onto the shortlist as per uh, your recommendations. We currently have... £46.6 million pounds available to us, but Charlie Austin is in the process of leaving us, so that will be added to soon. I have quite a number, actually, of players on the shortlist here. We have Thomas Partey, uh, Jean-Philippe Gbamin. I don't know whether the G is silent. It might be Jean-Philippe Gbamin. I'm not sure. Feel free to let me know the pronunciation in the comments. Uh, Ruben Neves as well. Leon, uh, Leander Dendonka Saul. Cabellos, Suarez, Dennis Suarez, obviously, Ozzycoup, Lewis Cook, uh, Yassine Ayub, Cyprien, Andre Gomez, Gundwan, Harry Winks, and Corin Tantaliso, who, of course, were already on the shortlist anyway. Uh, as to who I would prioritise throughout this list, at this stage, no idea. Still waiting for scout reports, or at least partial scout reports, on uh, Thomas, I mean, Neves, Dendonka, uh, Lewis Cook, Ayub, and Cyprien. Obviously, Corentin Taliso we've looked at previously and he's very, very talented. Ilke Gundogan is also very, very good too. Andre Gomez has superb stats as well, but his wages might be a real uh, struggling point because uh, he's actually on 230 grand a week. That's a lot of money. Certain number I might not be able to, uh, to rival. We have Denis Suarez also on a lot of money as well, but he's still pretty tasty, uh, able to be good in the tackle or good enough in the tackle, and his passing, short passing of 94 is pretty mad. Danny Cabellos actually looks very good. Good in the tackle, good in the the uh, with the ball at his feet as well, and passing's decent. Saul, obviously, is a wonderful all-round player. Shorty pass, shorty, shorty. 90 short passing and 90 stand tackle. To be fair, he's probably rival with Corentin Taliso as favourite to sign, but valuation might be an issue with him as well. And uh, Dendonk is decent, we know. Ruben Neves, I'm keen to see what his stats look like. Three or four FIFAs ago, he was like the go-to youth player when he was back in uh, South America. But now he's across here in uh, in Europe and has been at Wolves throughout this save. And hopefully, I would have thought, has grown quite well. I'm intrigued to see how good he is. Uh, we actually will play against one of the players on the shortlist. Cyprien is at West Ham. So I would presume they'll be starting him here against us away from home at London Stadium. West Ham lost their opening game of the season, as did we. Uh, we were rather disappointing in that game as well. I'm going to take McCarthy out and uh, I will throw... In fact, I might as well just leave DeAndre Edlin there, actually, considering I don't actually have uh, any wingers available right now because Richarlison is injured or any extra wingers. I mean, I could throw uh, Diedu or Obafemi out wide if needs be, or even at Cam, so Promise can go out wide. We do have three wingers in the starting front three attacking midfield slots. But uh, one thing you guys actually did ask me to do as well, which I shall do right now, and I've literally just remembered to do it, is give Jack Stevens a new contract. He currently has a release fee clause of about five million, I think you said, and he um, let's have a look. Go to financial. If I actually press the right button, I think he has a release fee clause of five million and a valuation of seven, which indeed he does. So uh, let's delegate the renewal. He's currently on thirty-two. There's no way I'm going to give him ninety-six thousand pounds a week. We'll start at forty. And he's not getting any more than 55 out of me. And he doesn't want to negotiate any further. Well, you're not... Mm, okay, I might have to do that manually then, rather than delegate. But never mind. That's weird. Don't know why I would expect so much, considering he's still only 77 rated and not necessarily anywhere near my first team on a regular basis. But still, let's go and play West Ham. And we'll wait for those scout reports to come back on the remaining players, or at least partial scout reports, so I can have a small insight as to their actual quality. And either at the end of this episode or next episode, we will find out, or I will throw up a vote as to who you guys want me to sign. But it will probably be, uh, probably be this episode, I would have thought. Maybe at the end of the next, we'll just have to play it by ear, won't we? But up first, West Ham away from home. Missed the initial graphics. West Ham starting five at the back and going for a 2-1-2 as their front five. Mikel Antonio and Javier Hernandez will lead the line with Manuel Lanzini set just behind. That's a strong team, both physically and in quality. This is going to be quite a challenge. 
Nice tackle by Quincy Promise. They have got a number of defenders back. So they are starting that five in the back formation. But the wingbacks push a long way forward. And Quincy Promise very nearly gives us a perfect start. I didn't feel comfortable enough to shoot immediately with Borg Myrell there. But Ward Prowse found some space. The defender closes him down at Adrian comes to punch. Well, we perhaps should have taken the lead there. But we haven't. But positive signs that we can cause some problems in this game. I'm not sure. Oh, I could try and go for a finesse from this. A box of Borg Myrell. But Sheikou Kiyate throws himself in front of the shot obviously extremely disappointed not to have taken anything from the game against Brighton in the last episode I wanted to win that let alone uh, maybe come away with a point but of course we unfortunately find ourselves being defeated by two goals to one and West Ham could be in behind here but thankfully they've gone backwards rather than forwards and now they're going sideways too Romeo across to Clover out wide to Kieran Tierney Inside there to Mayoral, promise making the run. I'll go back to Borja Mayoral. Can't keep it down. That was a really good chance. I should have done much better with that finish. I'm disappointed in myself. Antonio, picked off by Oriol Romeo. Nicely done. Show some strength. Okay, or don't. Oriol Romeo outmuscled by Manuel Lanzini. I never thought I'd see the day. Antonio just dinks that in. And Aritha Balaga will come to punch. Why aren't you guys telling me that I should actually call him Kepa rather than Aritha Balaga because he prefers that? I've absolutely no idea. I've always known him as Aritha Balaga, but I shall uh, probably call him a mixture of both, to be fair. Is there a figure to book of Bonner there for that? I don't think he deserves a booking. I was a bit a bit tame from the referee there. Definitely didn't deserve a yellow card, but Romeo will take this shot. And Sofian Bufal is here, and the lineup for the shot is on, but unfortunately the shot, that the or the line of the shot that went in was absolutely terrible and well wide. That was poor. Lanzini to deliver the free kick into the box here for West Ham. Obviously, we mentioned they've got strength in quality and in physicality, and a number of their players are tall as well, but it was a finesse effort from the, from the edge of the box from Evertuccino that looked very nearly found the top corner with an extremely precise effort. Cedric into Buffal. Cross here to Ward Prowse. Forward into Borja Mayoral. Cross to Romeu. Oh, it's nicely done. I can't get to this shot. Oh, what nice tackle by all Prowls and Promes. Oh, God, West Ham are just getting a foot in every single time, whether it be to block a pass or to block a shot in the final third. They've defended... Oh, that's a nice turn. They've defended superbly well. They've not been too bad offensively either, but not too troubling. That was a terrible pass. Now I've said that they have not been too troubling. They're going to really trouble me. And I'm going to find myself conceding a goal, aren't I? Cross comes in. Up we go with Skriniar. And away, thankfully. Chicharito. Nice tackle by Skriniar. Forward there. And across from Promise to Bufal. To Romeu. Here's Kieran Tierney. I'll rifle that in there. To Patrick Cliver. Justin Cliver. Matt times I call him Patrick Cliver. It's just silly. Wall Prowse crossed to Ori Romeu. Through there to Promise. Can we? Oh, it's a nice turn. No, maybe. Oh, I was going to say, can we take the lead? I tried to lay it across initially to Borja Mayoral with promise once I turned just there, but it stepped in. Thankfully, it bounced to him and was on target initially, but just bent away at the last moment. Incredibly frustrating. But unfortunately, still nil nil and probably will be at half time. There is the half time whistle. Chicharito. I see the run of Antonio in the middle. As does Chicharito, but Mikel Antonio fires wide. Weight of the pass was great. Perfectly into the stride of the uh, fellow striker. Skriniar couldn't keep up with him, but luckily he couldn't find the target. That was close, though. Tierney, I'm going to fire that to Borja Mayoral. Promise will go for the overlap. We've gone backwards to Ward Prowse first. Then to Quincy. Nice drop of the shoulder and space to run into in the box. The woodwork from Quincy Promise. Oh, I can't believe neither side has scored so far in this game. It's been ridiculous. Loads of chances. Not necessarily loads of saves either. The shots just haven't been accurate enough. Lovely takedown by Masuaku. Cedric coming across and defends that very nicely. There will be goals in this game. There can't be this amount of chances in a game of football for there not to be goals. Surely at some point something has to go in for either side. Mayoral will turn again and look for promise. And I'll go back to Borja Mayoral. Oh, but I 
can't find the pass I need. Chicharito to Lanzini. I think it was his first touch that turned it to Kiate rather than a genuine pass attempt. But here's Masuaka up wide down the line into Mikel Antonio. Cross comes in. Keepers come to punch. Lanzini couldn't read it. But it is going to drop here to Antonio into the box again. That's looping, but that's comfortable for the keeper. Half an hour to go. Neither side made any changes yet. I think some might be coming soon. Maybe the pace of GAGU might be what we need to unlock the back line of this West Ham side. Paul Mayoral has played well, but he's not necessarily led the line with true force. That being said, what's the now scores? No, Obwana steps in. All right, that's made the decision up in my mind. Paul Mayoral coming off, GAGU coming on. And let's bring Yuri Klasi on too. Move Promise out wide and Walprells up front. And then swap Buffel and Promise. Right. 25 minutes to score a goal. Clover, four to Mayor out. Promise. Just reaches Promise. Here's Sofian Buffel. The Ang's there, but Miguel Spin beats him. Promise. Remeu. Borja rallies through that gap. The Spaniard to Spaniard. Oh, and it works. Well, his last action of the game, Borja Mayoral is to put the ball in the back of the net. I've brought off Borja Mayoral now for Dieju. In fact, there might still be time to not make that change. I think I'll play Dieju in the second game of the episode in the cup. Borja Mayoral will continue on now. I'll put my faith in him. He's made the breakthrough. Let's see if he can do it again for a second time, put the game out of reach. Well worked. Tried to step in with Squinny out, wasn't able to do it. Lanzini. Antonio, ball is on out wide, but oh, he is going to use Masuaku, who's dead on his feet by the looks of things, so is by his stamina. Harris has headed that only to Antonio, who very tidily tucks it home first time. What a terrible clearance from the defender. That was embarrassingly poor from Henry Harris. You expect a defender to head it further than 10 yards. Great finish, take nothing away from that, but must be better, Henry Harris. Must be better. Top finish, though. Maybe through the gap. We foul back to James Will Prowse. Thought he was going to step in there and get it away from me. Hence the <laughs> fluctuation in voice. Cedric turns his side well. Delivery. Mayoral. Oh, what a save from Adrian. Very nearly immediately firing back again myself. Quincy Promise with the delivery. Keeper's going to come and punch. It will drop here to Cedric. Final Will Prowse. You're on side. He promised just, I believe. I was incorrect. Cross to Romeo. Mural, who fouls down the line. Actually, you can fire this. Look, if you're already classy. It's actually James Wall Prowse pushing through the middle. Harris. He didn't even try and head that one. What are you doing, Henry? He's not having the best of games here, Henry Harris. Well, not having the best of the second half. He was pretty solid in the first 45. But he made a mistake to lead to their goal. And he made another mistake there that very nearly led to another opportunity. This time he does hack that away, but only out for a corner. Masuaku going off as they make one final change to try and switch things around and get themselves a winner. I'm wanting to get myself a winner though, if you don't mind. Here's Evertesinio again into Cyprien. He's one of the men that's come on. And of course, he's a player we're very much interested in in this window. Mikel Antonio steps in. Oh, sorry. Cedric steps in on Mikel Antonio. Uth with the ball across. Harris this time heads away well. We'll press Romeo. I don't really want to use Oriel Romeo on a counter attack. I don't really have much choice right now. Ward-Prowse, what a shit pass. Ward-Prowse was arriving and I really needed something better than that from Oriol Romeu. Skriniar can't cut that out, but Cedric can. Move it out wide here to Quincy Promise. Look for Mayorel. Oh, but the pass is read by Phil Jones. It looks like it's going to be a point of peace here at the London Stadium. I would very much have liked to get the victory, but it does look like it's only going to be a draw. Antonio will deliver. Keeper will come and catch well. Free kick given, I would have liked to have played on and actually tried to catch them on a quick counter-attack. But now, of course, all of the defenders are going to be able to get back into position. And as I build the ball away, what's the betting that the full-time whistle will arrive before I'm able to build anything? Never mind. It's really annoying. A, to draw, and B, to draw because of a mistake from a defender. I thought I did everything right in that instance by clearing the ball at the near post, trying to just get it away. But unfortunately, the clearance wasn't good enough from Henry Harris. And we draw 1-1 at the London Stadium. We'll advance 
the next week and see what else happens in the transfer window. In fact, we've got three emails. Charlie Austin sold. Nine million added to my budget, plus 80-odd thousand pounds a week. I read Charlison is on his way back from injury too, which is great news. There have been a few people in the comments asking where Richarlison is. He's been injured. That's where he's been. But, well, why is that Charlie Austin money not gone onto my budget? I had £46 million pounds and the Charlie Austin money hasn't gone onto my budget. Let me advance a little bit further. Pretty sure I should have well over 50 now. Don't tell me it's failed to add the money to my... Okay, good. I did have a slight panic there, thinking that it had forgotten to add the money. I just needed to advance a little bit. Okay, so I've got enough, maybe, for most of the players on the shortlist. The majority of the players on the shortlist, other than people like Saul... Uh, Gomez and uh, Taliso. Okay, because I've not really got anyone else I can sell for any real valuation. Minimal, minimal, minimal. Okay, well that is going to make it slightly easier to make a decision because it immediately rules out three of the higher rated players. So if I just do this, we can get rid of Saul, get rid of Taliso and get rid of Andre Gomez. I can't afford any of those guys. We could perhaps afford Gundogan. Uh, Denis Suarez is still a genuine op uh, possibility. Uh, Danny Cabellos is very good too. Denis Suarez, was he any good in the tackle? 60 stand tackling, it's not amazing. What's your coup? 61, not exactly incredible either. Danny Cabellos, is 23, so two years younger than Denis Suarez, and he's okay in the tackle and okay in possession as well. His ball control and dribbling is very good. Might go for Danny Cabellos, you know. Right, well, now we know how much money we've got to spend. Uh, yeah, I'll put it to a vote. I'll go and play Bournemouth, but now we know how much money we've got to spend. No, let me let me get the scout. Let me get partial scout reports back first, because I'm. I can only put five people in on the vote, so I'm going to have to narrow it down yet further. Can I play him? No. Right, Bournemouth away in the Carabao Cup. And then we'll be uh, back to Premier League action with the game against West Brom in tomorrow's episode on transfer deadline day. But we shall rotate around a little bit. Richarlison, can he start? No. But he should be able to play from the bench. So let's put Jordi Classy in at Cam and promise out wide. There we go. And I shall put Richarlison on the bench in place of Buffal. Where's the Hurt can start ahead of Harris, who had a terrible game. Ryan Bertrand can get a start too. And can James McCarthy and Jack Stevens please sign a new contract, Jack? We'll try and do that again once we've played this game. Right, we haven't won the League Cup yet. We haven't actually gotten very far in the League Cup at all in any of the opening two seasons. Let's try and do it this time. Right, Lewis Cook, who is on my shortlist, is starting this one. Gatchinovic and Roberts out wide, Josh King up top, Chilwell, Cook, Ake and Smith with Begovic in goal. It's not full strength, but it's still strong enough. And to be fair, I'm not at full strength, but we still should be strong enough. We'll wait and see. Throw from Bertrand. Justin Clyburn sprinting over to take possession. Romeo to Classy, through to Jeju. I do need to start training his finishing. To be fair, Begovic would have plucked almost any shot out of the air. I perhaps should have gone for a driven low, but never mind. He's still got 79 finishing, Jeju, so he's good enough. But I will start training him because his physical stats are already very, very good. And his ball control and dribbling is already decent too. It's just his finishing that isn't quite world class. As soon as that finishing stat starts to go up, I'm pretty sure his overall striker rating or just overall in-game rating will uh, go up as well. Nice turn by Josh King. Drags that back, plays it into Salah. But unfortunately for him, he's giving it straight to me. Ta. Nice tackle by Wesley Hurt. Ball to Classy. He's asking for the ball through that channel, DA2. Oh, tried to take it early to try and catch keeper and defender out. And we caught the defender out, but the keeper was equal to it. Good chance that for Jeju, actually. I felt like if I took it an extra pace... 
his pace would have taken him too close to the keeper and Begovic would have had a simple save just to gather it up but as it happened we took it early unfortunately weren't able to take the lead they might be able to do something similar at the other end though no Ryan Bertrand scores an own goal Great save by the keeper. Bertrand just sticks out a leg trying to take a touch. Oh. I think that's one of those you can call a FIFA goal. Because in real life, that wouldn't have happened. Never mind. 1-0 Bournemouth after 37 minutes. Lamina to Cedric. Down the line there to promise. Into Lamina again. Jordi Classy's there. Drive past. Oh, Jordi. No, where's Nathan Ake come from? I thought I'd beaten him there. Forget just how quick Nathan Ake can be sometimes. Salah's in behind here. Jack Stevens trying to catch him. Salah created the chance that led to the opening goal, and if it weren't for the post, would have created the chance that led to the second goal as well. Poor oh, dearie me. Very nearly 2 0 Bournemouth. Cedric, rifle that to promise. His first touch was great, his second touch was crap. Lamina into Jeju. Oh, lovely footwork. And the acceleration and the finish, not there. Promise just didn't react in time, couldn't stick out a leg. I'm going to go in at half-time, 1-0 down here. King, Salah, lovely touch and turn. Now here to Gatchinovic. Into the middle, Josh King. Oh, no! I just couldn't switch player and stick a leg out quick enough. Two and a half minutes into the second half and Bournemouth have extended their lead. Great touch here from Josh King to just drag it back and then poke it through. Oh, and it's gone through the defender's legs, Jack Stevens. He's, lit, he's reached out for it and actually reached too far. 2-0 Bournemouth. It's Josh King. Oh, it's nutmeg Jack Stevens. Saved at his near post, but bloody hell, Jack. Nutmeg for the goal. Nutmeg there for the ball in that nearly led to another goal. Oh, and Classy can't quite reach Jeju with the through ball. Here's Cook. Back to Smith. Out wide to Roberts. Bertrand trying to step in, but decides so just to run around him rather than actually stick a leg out like I asked. Salah, that's a nice drop shoulder. That's a strong challenge, but a fair challenge from the defender. Gatchinovich actually wins that head of my player. Josh King out here to Roberts, but that's well wide. Promise. Jeju. Accelerate, accelerate. Yeah, you can't catch me when I do that, can you? I've moved Quincy Promise central now, and we've brought on DeAndre Yedlin. Oh, who very nearly has an instant impact. We've brought on Richarlison as well, and he can't fire the ball into the middle to find a teammate. I moved DeAndre Yedlin, or brought DeAndre Yedlin on at right mid. And Richarlison's come on on the left, because I wanted to move Promise back central. Salah pushing forward, little back heel, but Romeo cuts it out. Is that the second time I've hit the woodwork in this game, or was it in the previous one? I can't quite remember, actually. I think I hit the post in this game, didn't I? Might well have been the previous one against West Ham, but regardless, we just hit the post there. Josh King twisting and turning. That shot's well wide, thankfully. 25 minutes to go. Positive signs with the substitutions. That will be able to win that. Get ourselves back into the game, but yes. No, well done, Wesley. Jordan. Smith, oh, Jeeps, Arter again. Smith again. Bournemouth starting to play some good possession football here. It's really difficult to play against Jordan. Oh, finish from Jordan Ibe. It looked as if it was going to go wide and then floated, floated, floated into the far top corner off the post. Just as I was starting to create chances with the substitutes, confident of being able to get myself back into the game, or at least more confident than I have been, that, oh, dreamy finish, dreamy finish, there's no chance of Alex McCarthy or any goalkeeper getting anywhere near that, what a goal, nice ball by Jordan, I through to Gachinovic who's onside, lovely ball into the box but we will clear it away, we clear it away properly, maybe score a consolation goal perhaps, I'm definitely not going to be scoring three in the six minutes that remain, so disappointed, I really wanted to do well in this competition this year. After picking up the FA Cup last year, I wanted to add another domestic cup trophy to our cabinet this season. Unfortunately, that isn't going to happen, at least not in Season 3. We might well have to wait until Season 4 before we win the League Cup. 
Jeju shrugged off there, just not strong enough. Oh, we are still a work in progress here, this Southampton side. We may well have finished second last year, but we definitely, definitely aren't capable of pushing for the Premier League title this season. And we will find it difficult to replicate the success of last year. I'm almost certain of it. There's still plenty of work that needs to be done to this team to make it world class. We don't really have any truly world class players. Well, that wasn't meant for you. Oh, Jesus Christ. We don't have any world class players, really. Our goalkeeper and Quincy Promes are kind of the two higher rated players, but nobody else really, you'd say, is top draw. We're very effective. The majority of the time, he says, 4-0 down against Bournemouth. We're normally very effective, but we're not necessarily, you know, a top quality side. So hopefully, this season we can... I'd be happy with top six again this year in the Premier League. I'm so heavily disappointed to have gone out of that competition so early on, though. But such is the way of things. Let's have a look and see if we've got any scout reports back for the other players on our shortlist. Got a scout report back on Willian Cyprien. At West Ham, obviously we just played against him today, but we weren't able to get the victory. And he didn't really play that much, to be fair. He came off the bench. His stacks look decent, and he's very much affordable. Um, so, as such, he's very much in the reckoning, or in the running, for the new signing. I've had loads of games rescheduled, so I believe the Champions League group stage has been drawn. Am I as far as... I am as far as transfer deadline day, so I'm not going to get... I'm not going to get scout reports back now. For Thomas, I mean, or Ruben Neves. Actually, oh no, here we go. I've got, I've got a vague idea. I've got a vague idea. Right, so Thomas Partey. Physicals, good jumping, good stamina, okay strength. Pace-wise, he's all right. Slide tackle and stand tackle look good. Short passing looks good as well. Uh, ball control and dribbling, okay. Uh, but I mean, let's have a look. He's two-star skill moves, three-star weak foot. Doesn't necessarily set me alight. Good strength. Uh, good aggression. Well, great aggression. Good acceleration at sprint speed. Uh, stamina's okay. Jumping's okay. Oh, his tackling looks decent, but he's really not that good on the ball. I'm going to say no to him. Let's have a look at Ruben Neves. He's three-star, three-star. Physically, he's not as impressive as a number of the others. Technically, short passing is very good. Stand tackling is okay. He's only 22, so there's going to be room to grow. I think I'll throw him on the short list. I think Thomas being 26, I've got be I've got better younger options, to be fair. So I'll take Thomas off. Ozuku, 61 slide tackle, 68 stand tackle. Uh, Lewis Cook... <laughs> I'm going to say no to Lewis Cook. Ayub. Uh, his short passing's not that good. His long, long passing's good. I'm going to say no to Ayub as well. Oh, there's so many people on this bloody list. I'm going to say no to Harry Winks as well, I think. There are definitely better options. Well, to be fair, I already have better options in my current squad than Harry Winks. Uh, then Donker, four-star week for only two-star skills, but he's... <sighs> I've got, there are better options. There are just better options. So Ruben Neves, Danny Cabellos, Denis Suarez, Ozzycoop, Cyprien, Gundawan. I mean, Gundawan's not, he's 28. He's the highest rated, but he's 28. But he's four star, four star. I can only have five options on a vote. That's the problem. So someone here has to go. Ruben Neves. Danny Cabellos. He's nothing spectacular, is he, Danny Cabellos? Denis Suarez, 60 stand tackle. 94, 94 short passing and 91 dribbling, 87 ball control lead me to... And he's pretty quick as well. I'm going to... I'm going to take Cabellos out and have Denis Suarez. Right, these are going to be the five then on the vote. Ilke Gundwan, uh, Wylan... I don't know how to pronounce his first name, to be honest. Wylan, Willan. It's going to be a W, not a V, isn't it? Like Wissan Ben Yedda. Wylan, or Willan, Cyprien. Uh, Ozzycoop. Ogusan Ozzycoop. As you can see from his stats. 
Uh, Dennis Suarez. These are those stats. And then Ruben Nevers. They will be the five on the vote. Have your say. Vote on the YouTube vote. Top right hand corner you'll see a little eye symbol. Click on that. Have your vote and we will act on it in the next episode where we will play West Brom and then end the transfer window on transfer deadline day. Drop the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further content. Actually, one thing I was going to do, I believe our Champions League groups have been drawn because I had loads of games rearranged. We have... Is that Vitor... Yeah, Vitor Guimaraes. We've been drawn, uh, drawn against him in pre-season tournaments so far on FIFA 18, but never in a full-on competitive competition. So Vitor Guimaraes, uh, PSV and Barcelona. Great. Well, we won't be winning the group, but we might, we should finish second. We're better than PSV, surely. And we're definitely better than Guimaraes. Okay. I think we can get out of that Champions League group. The board want us to reach the final for God knows what reason. But I'm definitely not going to be able to do that. But get out of the group stage is at least the minimum requirements for me this season. Draw the video a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel too. Let me know in the comment section down below which way you voted. Do have your vote and I'll see you next time.